Since the Galaxy Tab 7.7 a few years back, Samsung hasn't featured their famed AMOLED display on any of their tablets. That now changes with the Galaxy Tab S line. Samsung's flagship tablets aim to take on the competition. So can the Galaxy Tab S line do for tablets what the Galaxy S line did for the phones? Do they have what it takes to gain foothold in a market dominated by Apple? Well, let's find out in this video. Anyway, if this is your first time here or in case you've plain old forgotten, my name's Ash and you're watching C4E Tech. Let's get started. Let's start with the built-in design. Samsung's recent track record does not indicate great design, but surprisingly, both devices feel well-built and you could even say kind of premium. Yep, it's still plastic. In fact, we find the same perforated back design from the Galaxy S5 here, but the fact that the bezels are slim and the tablets are insanely thin and light make up for it. Both tablets are just 6.6 millimeters thick. The Galaxy Tab is 8.4, weighs in at around 100, 290 grams, and the 10.5 about 465 grams. This means both tablets are much slimmer and lighter than equivalent offerings from Apple while packing in bigger displays. This is largely due to the plastic body and the Super AMOLED display being used. Super AMOLED negates the need for a backlight and helps keep the device light and slim. Anyway, we'll get to the displays in just a bit. Samsung feels the 8.4 would be used more in portrait whereas the 10.5 in landscape and this reflects in the familiar open apps home and back key placements on both tablets. The other button placements are also similarly sensible. The 8.4 has the volume rockers, power button, IR blaster, the SIM and microSD card slots to the right, primary microphone, microUSB port, 3.5mm headphone jack and a speaker grill at the bottom, nothing to the left and on top another speaker and a secondary noise cancelling microphone. On the other hand, the 10.4 has the 3.5mm headphone jack and a speaker to the left, the power button, volume rockers and an IR blaster on top, the micro SIM and micro SD card slots, the micro USB port and, a, and the other speaker to the right, and a single microphone at the bottom. Also notice the gold 4 metal plastic along the sides on both devices. Feels well done. While gold on the Galaxy S5 felt rushed, almost like a knee-jerk reaction to the success of the iPhone 5S, with the Tab S, it feels like the designers have had a chance to catch their breath and have come up with something that actually looks good. Anyway, both tablets have a 8 megapixel rear camera with a single LED flash along with a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera. The difference here is that the earpiece and proximity sensor found on the Galaxy, uh, Galaxy Tab S 8.4 is lacking on its bigger sibling. Makes sense given that it's going to be close to impossible to put a 10.5 inch tablet up to, your, up to your ear and talk. Me personally, I wouldn't do that with the 8.4 either. Anyway, moving on, both tablets also retain the fingerprint, uh, fingerprint sensor found on the Galaxy S5. Yep, you still have to swipe over it, but it makes more sense on devices that you use with two hands anyway. While I rarely use the fingerprint scanner on the Galaxy S5 since that affected single-handed usage, I really found it useful on these tablets. Now, everything that we've seen so far has ranged from fair to good. Nothing's really stood out, but we aren't done just yet. The star of the show here is the Super AMOLED display much brighter than offerings from other manufacturers. Better viewing angles, sharper, as always contrasts great with AMOLED displays and even sunlight visibility is top notch. A common complaint is that Super AMOLED displays are oversaturated, well that might have once been true, not anymore. Yes, initially the col colors are extremely punchy and pop and that might not be to everyone's liking, but Samsung's provided options to tweak it. So if more natural colors are what you want, the Tab S offers that too. Also keep in mind the AMOLED display on the Tab S covers a wider array of colors compared to any LCD offering. Great stuff from Samsung. Now while Samsung's captured my interest via the amazing display, that really isn't anything without the horsepower to back it up. So let's move on to what's underneath the hood. Both tablets are powered by the Exynos 5420 chipset. This is the same chip th chipset used on the non-LTE variants of the Galaxy Note 3. Four Cortex-A15 cores clocked at 1.9 GHz each. 4 Cortex-A7 cores clocked at 1.3 GHz each, coupled with the Mali uh, T628 MP6 GPU and 3 gigs of RAM. Note that the Exynos 5420 does not support HMP or heterogeneous multiprocessing and cannot run all 8 cores at the same time. That being said, the chipset itself is still great, a very good performer actually. But when it comes to GPU intensive tasks, it does begin to feel the heat. While most intensive games do run smooth, you could expect the occasional title to stutter or lag a bit. 
Again, it's mostly the exception rather than the norm. Do note some variants of the Galaxy Tab S, depending on the market where they are sold, will ship with Snapdragon 800 on board. But the Exynos variants do support LTE though. Anyway, all this is powered by a 4900mAh battery on the 8.4 and a 7900mAh battery on the 10.5. The battery life, as expected from a Samsung device, is great. 12 hours is what we got from both devices on a looping video playback tests. Good stuff again. Moving on to the software, both devices run on Android 4.4.2 KitKat with Samsung's latest TouchWiz UI on top. TouchWiz is, well, TouchWiz has always a bunch of marketing gimmicks with a few great features buried inside. Let's talk about these few great features here. Number 1. Multi-user mode. This lets you set up to 8, to 8 different users for your tablet, each with up to 3 different fingerprints. Great if you want to share your tablet with your family or friends. Number 2. SightSync 2.0. This lets you access your phone from your tablet. While it works with only a select few Samsung devices, it definitely is very useful. I enjoyed not having to get up to check a comment or reply to a WhatsApp message. Moreover, if you do own a Galaxy S5, you can even get your calls on your Galaxy Tab S. Finally, some innovation. Number 3. Remote PC This lets you access your PC from the Tab S. Works smooth. Barring these, features like the private mode that lets you hide files from prying eyes, the blocking mode that turns notifications off based on a few preset parameters, Samsung's extremely useful multi-window mode, the toolbox for quickly uh, moving between apps, they all make a return here. Samsung's also included a lot of goodies like Handcom Office, 100 HD movies with MyPlex, my favorite, 3 months of Marvel Unlimited, that's 15,000 Marvel comics. All good. But like I said earlier, it's still TouchWiz and will occasionally keep reminding you of that fact. While overall it doesn't consistently lag or make the user experience tiresome, if you're used to stock Android, TouchWiz will definitely remind you that it's not stock Android. While, most, uh, while mostly apps will still open up quick, switching, switching between them will be fast, occasionally you're gonna run into that inevitable minor lag. A stutter here, a bit of choppiness there, but that's TouchWiz for you. That's the price you pay for all the amazing features that Samsung's managed to add here. And those gimmicks as well. Anyway, so what else? Oh yeah, the camera. In my honest opinion, cameras aren't as important on a tablet as they are on a smartphone, but Samsung's added a pretty decent shooter here. Uh, the 8 megapixel camera on the back is pretty good, it can shoot some decent images under good lighting conditions. While the flash isn't really good enough to make a serious difference under low light, I like the fact that it was there. Finally, a tablet that I could use as a flashlight. Anyway, now we get to the price. Both the tablets are priced similar to their counterparts from Apple and that's the segment that Samsung seems to be targeting here. Prospective iPad buyers that they wish to convert into Galaxy Tab S buyers. So where does that leave us? Well. On the pro side, we've got sleek build, decent camera, amazing display, great battery life, and tons of add-ons to enhance the experience. But on the other hand, TouchWiz is well, TouchWiz, and the Exynos, though it's pretty good, is not as good as a Snapdragon 800. It just might not be the chipset that everyone wants. But that being said, in my honest opinion, I feel the pros do far outweigh the cons and I personally love the 8.4. Reading on the 8.4 is just amazing. The display is brilliant and I really enjoyed my time with these two devices. I would recommend these to anyone in a heartbeat. So if you do want to pick up either of these tablets, you can do that from Amazon or Flipkart. I'll leave direct links right below the like button in the description. So with that being said, we get to the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. And for more videos like these, please do stay subscribed. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.